good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time of day it is, when you hear this message, I pray that your mind, your body, your spirit are all at ease so that you can receive and respond to words of wisdom. Ashe. Have you ever lost your patience? Uh, it's pro probably a more appropriate question is, how many times a day do you lose your patience and you feel it all slipping away? How many times an hour, right, do you lose your patience? Um, part of the human condition is to grapple with patience at different levels. And the good thing is that it's such a universal experience that we can all share in, you know, the ups and downs of mastering the art of being more patient. We all know that when we lose our patience, uh, the effect is almost instant. When you when you say or do things. Um, when you've lost your patience, you almost always feel that sense of regret instantaneously, right? It doesn't take forever for you to realize, oh my goodness, I just lost it. Shouldn't have said that. Shouldn't have said that. Shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have made that face, you know? And um, likewise, on the other side of the equation, though, we don't tend to get an equally powerful reward for being patient right if you if you endure some kind of an insult or a slight uh you, you, you no one's going to reward you right no one will know that you didn't make that face or or you didn't suck your teeth or you didn't roll your eyes or you didn't stomp out the room and cuss everybody out right no one's going to notice that so uh it's interesting that the reward for patience isn't as immediate and tangible as the consequence of lacking patience. So what I want to do before we go too far into the conversation is I want to highlight uh, the fact that you really do want to be patient because at the end of the day, deep in your heart, deep in your heart, you want to be selected. You want to be chosen. You want to be uh, able to show up and be useful and make a meaningful contribution in the areas of life that you really want to, you know, show up and be present. You want to be recognized uh, as a contributor as somebody who who um, adds value to what's happening, right? That's what you want, truly. And that understanding or that acknowledgement is what's gonna drive you to be able to exercise more and more and more degrees of patience, okay? Um, one verse of Ifa tells us about the um, chameleon, he's known as Ogun Rara uh, in this particular verse. Ogun Rara, the chameleon, uh, is the delegate of Olodumare, who was sent with Obatala into the world at the time of creation. And one of the things that characterized the chameleon is its flexibility. It's ability to keep changing and keep changing, keep changing, right? No matter what happens, the chameleon can match the situation. He can match the environment. And he doesn't ever run out of colors. He doesn't run out of patterns, right? The chameleon is, is infinite in his flexibility. And in so many ways, that's an emblem of patience. Because of that, Olodumare, the supreme being, chose the chameleon to be his eternal delegate. And so that particular verse reminds us of our own deeply seated um, need 
to be chosen, to be useful, to be the designated person that has to be pre present when certain things happen. Now, you may want to be chosen in one area uh, and you may want to be chosen in the business arena. Someone else may want to be chosen um, in athletics. Someone else may want to be chosen in finance or in family or in spiritual practices. Whatever the area where you want to be recognized, it's really, really important that you don't um, pretend that it doesn't matter. OK, other people's opinions doesn't don't matter how other people feel about me and what I do. It just doesn't matter. Right. There's a time and a place for that, but you've got to get in touch with your need to be integrated into a body of others in order for you to really understand and practice patience at the highest level and get the full benefit of patience. All right. So that's the basic premise that I want to start with. I want you to think about it. I want you to start contemplating. Well, where are the areas of life where it is absolutely true? I need to be chosen. I need to be made a part of. I need to be the delegate. I need to, to be recognized as a high performer or as a meaningful contributor. What are those areas of your life? Focus on those and, and, and stand upon those areas or hold those areas in the, in the forefront of your consciousness for the rest of our conversation. Now, if you don't know, this is the Orisha Lifestyle Academy, and I'm your instructor, or by Femi Origuan. And as I mentioned, today I want to share a lesson with you on the power of patience. All right. So if we hold in our in our mind, in our in our, our hearts, the acknowledgement and the appreciation for the fact that you know we want to be chosen as a meaningful contribution in some area of life. We want to be needed. We have a need to be inserted as an integral part of something that involves other people and other causes. All right, if we, we accept that as a basic premise. What I want you to know about that is your need to be chosen and to be part of something is gonna, that, that is like the gateway to your ability to practice patience. It, this is, an indispensable part of your ability to practice uh, patience because it is precisely that point at which you deny your need to be a part of something else, to be a part of a, a, a greater cause, right? It's right where you draw that line. That's where the limitation of your practice of patience is going to be. All right. At precisely the point that you decide, I don't need any of this or any of these people, that's where your patience will be cut off. Okay. Impatience in this regard is synonymous with being antisocial. Impatience is synonymous with underperformance. Impatience is synonymous with the refusal to reach and express the fullness of your capacity. Okay, these are some basic understandings that I want you to keep in mind. What I'm saying is that at whatever level that you say that you are deciding to stop practicing patience, that's the point at which you're saying, I am not going to grow beyond this point. I am not going to improve beyond this point. OK. But if you decide that there is no limit to your patience, then likewise, you're also deciding that there's no limit to your growth. There's no limit to your capacity. There's no limit to your potential and your ability to express your unique attributes, natural gifts and talents. OK, so. Patience, when we talk about patience, it looks like tolerance. Patience looks like the ability to wait. Okay, when people see you or characterize you as a patient person or characterize other patient people, it looks like somebody who's able to be still, to be at ease, to remain calm, to not be agitated in the face of difficulty, adversity, and challenges. That's what patience looks like, right? 
but the practice of patience what it what it feels like what you're what it what you're doing is threefold okay I'm sure there's more than three but I'm gonna focus on three dimensions of the practice of patience what you're doing number one when you're when you're practicing patience you're maintaining your focus huge part of patience is mental you're focused on the mission the mission comes first what are you doing right we go back to that basic premise about where you really want to show up where you really want to be recognized where you want to be needed where you want to be chosen where you want to be the delegate right where do you want to be recognized that's your mission so the first rule of patience is remembering what what am I doing what's, what's the point of me being here in the first place what am I trying to accomplish okay because every scenario that you come in contact with everything every difficulty every opposition that you find you gotta ask yourself is this more important than the mission is telling this person about themselves more important than the mission am I gonna scuttle the mission so that I can read this person the riot act right so I can give this person a piece of my mind is 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 that more important than the mission right the second aspect of the practice of patience is clarifying clarifying you know in the in psychological circles we talk about uh, different percentages of of your experience and they say that you know let's say some people will say 10% of your reality is what actually happened 90% of your reality is how you interpret it or misinterpret it that's what, what we're really saying 10% of your reality is what actually happened 90% of your reality is what you think about it, how you feel about it, how you reacted to it, right? So when I say clarify, what, I'm, what I mean is patience looks like you exploring how you feel. Simple thing. Something happens and you ask yourself, how do I feel about this? How do I feel about this? What do I think? that means what do I think about this why do I think this happened or why do I think that didn't happen right and if you can't figure it out or if you can't quite make sense of why you feel a certain way or what why you think a certain way about an event or an experience clarifying also involves you you know clarifying with people around you hey this is how I'm feeling right now or this is what I think about this right now am I reading this right Am I reading this right? You know, you you should clarify, especially if you have strong feelings or really strong thoughts or ideas about something. Before you jump to any conclusion, get clear about what you think and how you feel and ask. Hey, am I am I in the right place? Are we talking about A, B, C? Are we talking about X, Y, Z? Are we looking at the same thing right now? Because this is what I'm hearing you describe or this is how I'm the feeling that I'm getting from what you're saying. Are we talking about this the same thing? Get clear. Okay. You ask yourself clarifying questions like, then is this the only way that I can think about it? Are there other ways that I could feel about this situation? Right? Clarifying is crucial. It's very, very important. You you probably have heard the story of the four blind men and the elephant, right? Everybody thought they knew what they were talking about. Turns out that because they were blind and the elephant was big, it was easy for them to be confused. And if they had stayed within their own siloed thinking, they would have kept arguing with one another about whether it was a wall or a vine or a rope or a house or a wall or whatever everybody thought it was. Right? It wasn't until they got clarity about the whole picture that they were able to say, oh, I was mistaken. Right? So how many mistakes have you made based on partial information, partial understanding some kind of a you know segmented portion of, of information and experience and you thought you knew everything and you just went ham right only to find out oops there was more okay so patience is, is a there's a huge part of the practice that involves clarifying okay now once you are clear okay about how you feel 
about what you think. The next piece is ownership. Ownership is an essential part of the practice of patience. You gotta own how you feel. I feel angry about this. I feel anxious about this. I feel afraid about this. I feel happy about this, right? I'm excited about this. I'm turned on about this. This is, you know, really uh, thrilling, whatever. You own it. And this is where your power is. Ownership is where your real power is. No matter what the feelings are, no matter what the thoughts are, where you're able to own them, that's where your power is. That's the part of the equation that is really about you. I feel this, and that's that's my decision. It's based on my experience. How I feel is not about other people. How you feel is not about other people. Okay, stop disempowering yourself by saying that these things make you feel this way and they make you feel that way. No, you choose to feel one way or another. And if your choice to feel isn't beneficial, then you have the power to choose something else just as easily. Okay. So you got to own your own experience at that level. If you can do those three things, your practice of patience will accelerate by leaps and bounds. Okay. Focus, clarify, and own. Focus on the mission. Clarify what's really happening. Clarify your experience and own your experience. Okay. Through all of these, what you're doing is you're cultivating two capacities. There's two over overriding outcomes of practicing those three things. Number one, you're going to increase your compassion. You are going to become more compassionate as you're able to focus, clarify, and own your feelings. More compassionate, first and foremost, with yourself. Right? Be gentle. Be, be gentle with yourself. Right? Be gentle with yourself. And as you're more gentle with yourself, you're going to be more gentle with other people. Okay? Secondly, you're going to cultivate wisdom. Because you're going to learn from your own experience. You're going to be able to reflect on your story. You're going to be able to reflect on how different experiences have contributed to your understanding or your misunderstanding. And that's going to, again, allow you to understand other people and be able to live your story and tell your story in a way that is uh, considerate of the journey of other people around you. Okay. Now. All of this is is a lot of internal work. It's not easy. Um, and like I said, the, the benefits of practicing patience are not nearly as obvious as the consequences for failure to practice patience. Right. You're not going to get a big reward for not cussing somebody out or not storming out of a meeting. Right. But there there is a huge value in practicing patience. And so what I want to want to share with you now are three values that come out of practicing patience. These are three gems that you're going to get from your ability to increase your patience bit by bit. The first benefit of, of being patient is permanence. Okay, permanence. When I say permanence, what I'm talking about is you're going to be able to maintain your place. You're going to be able to keep your position in the face of change and dynamic transformation. While everything around you is shifting, if you're patient, you will be able to maintain your position. Okay? You get beyond kind of like this um, immediate uh, recoil or kind of like a gag reflex, right? That just makes you react Right. When you can get beyond that initial reaction, it creates a space for you to discover more about what's going on. It allows you to stay in the pocket longer so that you can see things play out, you know, more completely. You don't check out, basically. You know, people, you can have like an, um, an emotional gag reflex and you check out emotionally. You back off. 
you can have a, a psychological, right, gag reflex. Something happens and bang, your mind goes off into a tangent and you're no longer present. You're not, you're not hearing anything that anybody is saying. You're not really seeing what's going on around you because you've allowed your mind to check out and you're thinking about something totally different. And by the time you come back, you don't know what happened because you weren't present mentally or emotionally or physically. Right. So you although you don't get the points for not cussing somebody out. Right. There's no immediate benefit. Right. But you you have the opportunity to see things play out. You're not having to repeat over and over and over again because you stayed in the game. You kept your head in the game. And that allows you to get a deeper understanding of how things really work and what the deeper needs are. OK, a second benefit of patience. Is is related to this idea of permanence, but it's continuity. Right? But when I'm thinking of continuity, I'm thinking of continuity that within yourself, the continuity between, you know, your skills and your abilities. You practice them in different places. Maybe you you have different jobs. You have different relationships. You move from one community to another. But you're the constant factor. Your, your patience is what allows you to, to transfer what you know or what you've seen or what you've experienced from one place and, and, and bring it into another place. And gradually you start to accumulate this understanding within yourself of how you can put things together in a unique way. In the business world, they call this sort of um, the act of being a knowledge broker or a knowledge worker, right? Knowledge workers are people who have expertise that they carry with them, right? It's, it's, it isn't something that can be characterized by a single job description. It's, 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 it's your unique accumulation of knowledge and skill. But in order to do that, you have to move beyond the kind of um, attachments that you may have had in one place to a, in a, in a, or another, right? Sometimes we have such an emotional attachment to one place or a, a relationship um, or an experience that we won't allow ourselves to detach, you know, the emotion from the from the experience or to detach the emotion from the skill that was developed so that we can keep practicing that skill somewhere else right that's continuity so we end up if you if you if you don't allow yourself to bring all of your skills cumulatively from one place to another you truncate your 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 abilities right you you deny yourself the ability to apply all of yourself. You, you, you deny yourself the ability to bring all of yourself into every situation because you're thinking or, or emotionally tying too much of this certain abilities to other places or to other people. Let, let's say love. Let's say love, for example. Love isn't something that's d deposited in other people. Love is something that other people bring out in you. And so it, it's it's your experience. It's something that you bring with you. It, it's not that when a person leaves you, they take your love with you with them. No, the, 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 the even if it's a great, great love. That great love is something that you experienced, something that you're going to carry with you. And so you go into any relationship or you go into any environment, you are always free to express that love. If you're able to detach the feeling of love from the person that you shared it with five years ago or six months ago or however long ago you were in a love relationship. The same process applies in every area of life, in your work, in your development of skills, in your spiritual practice. You know, these things are always uh, tied to relationships, but the continuous factor in every relationship is you. You're the common denominator. 
Okay, so as you're able to practice patience, you're going to be able to transfer all of your knowledge and all of your experience from one place to the next. Okay, that's going to increase your ability to function. And as, as I said, bring more of you into every aspect of your life. And the third benefit of practicing patience is fulfillment or empowerment. F to me, they're, they're almost synonymous. Fulfillment and empowerment are really closely related in my mind. And what I mean is that patience will yield you the, a higher and higher level of sympathetic resonance. You're able to endure, be present, and expand and grow to the point that you can vibrate at a higher level or at a deeper level. And you can sustain a deeper vibration with more people, right? Um, or under or under more circumstances, right? Your tolerance level for for you know getting to your A game it gets higher and higher and higher. So it, when you look at artists, for example, what is it that makes a professional dancer different from a, from a a, um, a social dancer or a painter or a musician singer? Well, a professional is able to do it at will. They're able to bring their A game at will. They don't have to have any special circumstances. It doesn't have to um, be a, 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 a special arena or, or a special audience. Uh -uh. When you're a professional, you're always ready to go there. Right? You're always ready to vibrate at that really deep level. Okay? That's a reflection of patience right that's 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 patience you could think of it as this sort of a a rubber band effect in the sense that the more tension you create the greater the release that you create patience allows you to increase the amount of tension that you can uh, endure internally you can go deeper within yourself and you, and you can maintain that level of tension. It's all it's like always present um, so that you can always release. You can always get maximum, you know, um, expression because you've in, increased your, your 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 tolerance level. You've increased the wave of your vibration internally. OK. And so that is what will allow you, again, to be chosen, to be the, de the delegate. It's through patience. Now, this is so crucial for us within Orisha Lifestyle because we talk a lot about patience. Patience is the father of all character. Patience is the father of existence. Patience is the mother of all blessings. But when it comes to how we actually cultivate patience, how we learn to practice patience. That is where uh, within our tradition, we don't give enough explicit instruction. Right. Making sacrifice is not going to increase your patience on its own. Uh, being initiated is not going to increase your patience all by itself. Taking different kinds of medicines or carrying different kinds of charms also it's not going to cultivate your patience automatically, right? Really, patience is built into the culture. If you spend some time in Yoruba land with, um, you know, particularly uh, Orisha devotees, priests, priestesses, you'll see how the culture cultivates patience and it, and it reinforces all of the things that I have described from recognizing your need to be chosen, to be a part of a group, to be part of some kind of a significant movement, 
the tradition in, reinforces that all the time. People are constantly being reminded of who you are from the from naming your name in the tradi traditional environment reinforces who you are and what your mission is. This is what you mean to us. That's why your name is this. Right. The culture reinforces how um, to focus and how to remember what your mission is and how to constantly evaluate. People are constantly reciting proverbs and telling you wise tales in that environment to reinforce, to help you assess, hey, is this more important than the mission? Are you on track right now? The culture constantly reinforces the, uh, the ability to explore and clarify your emotions, to clarify your thoughts, right? Even if you're looking at something like throwing Obi, right? As the Obi, as your mind thinks, so your Obi will speak is, you know, a proverb that people will tell you. You're looking to understand, you know, how you feel or what's going on. If you're in a good mood or a bad mood, you're, it's going to reflect in your Obi. Right. So that creates an opportunity for you to get clear. Hey, where am I right now? Am I reading the situation right? Everything is really positive. Why am I in a bad mood? Right. And finally, ownership. Ownership is crucial. Right. How, you your ability to to accept that your experience is the result of your decision making is is really really strongly emphasized in the um let, let's if we start with something as as really fundamental as ori ori is your superpower ori is your 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 ultimate line of defense and protection why because ori is constantly making choices for you in the unseen realm that reinforce your original choice your ori is constantly making choices Right. That's what destiny is. Your order is constantly making choices that realign you with your prenatal choice. The thing that brought you into the world. OK. But these are concepts. It's a bit abstract. What I've laid out for you in this practice of focusing, clarifying and owning are things that you can put into play right now. And you should continually practice them bit by bit, day by day until you find yourself in a situation where you can you can measure the benefits you can see how you're able to to maintain your position in the face of change you can see the continuity of your skills and your ability being able to accumulate and grow and give you more flexibility flexibility and more dexterity from one situation to the next you can see yourself reaching deeper and deeper levels of fulfillment that allow you to be you know enjoy more and more at freedom of expression and empowerment okay all of these are the blessings of patience and these are essential to spiritual leadership and within the school of orisha studies and orisha lifestyle academy i'm always in search of leaders i'm always in search of people who are committed to changing the world through positive influence. Is that you? Are you one of those people? Because if you are, I want you to visit me at obafemio.com or orishalifestyle.com. And I want you to start to explore the ways that we can work together so that you can live the medicine that will help heal your life and heal the lives of those who you are destined to serve. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.